Hello, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to episode seven of our Facebook Live. It's a bit chilly today. Um, I'm outside with the goats this morning. Um, so today's session is all about animal behavior. Um, and we thought a fantastic way to start would be with the goats. Um, morning. So um, at the moment, I'm just giving them some food. I don't know if you can see. There's Russ and we've got um, George and Bailey just behind me as well. Just having a bit of uh, extra breakfast. Um, so we're going to be discussing animal behaviour. What we've done is we've actually purchased some new toys for the goats this morning. Uh, morning Sophie, morning Amelia, morning Logan, uh, morning mum. <laughs> um, so we've bought some salt licks for the goats. I'm really interested to see um, how that changes their behaviour. Um, it's, they've got added copper in which is really really good for the goats. Um, so it's interesting, well hopefully going to be interesting to see how they behave. Um, we've also put up some more broom heads for them as well. Morning Yvonne. Ah, oh, Yvonne, I'll see if I can give you, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it round, actually it's probably a bit more sensible isn't it? Um, so everybody's having a bit of um, extra breakfast this morning. Morning Renee, morning Jess. Um, Oh, he doesn't like um, Andy very much unfortunately. And um, we're having a brand new stable added. Oh, morning Russ, handsome devil. Um, I don't know if you can hear the um, the drill going off at the, uh, at the moment but we're having oh my gosh <laughs> we're having um, an extra stable added in so there's more space for them to sleep in because unfortunately George and Bailey are um, bottom of the herd so they get a bit um get get kicked out don't you mate hey get a bit kicked out so um this is Russ though he's usually very shy but when food's around he's all game Andy how are you this morning oh hey yeah so Andy's just having some breakfast. Andy thinks he's the boss, but he's not. Oh, you mate. And they've got Hank and Harry up there having some breakfast. Hey, Aidan and Owen. Hey, Caitlin. Oh, I'm getting, I'm, Andy, don't be so mean. So this is a really good um, demonstration of behaviour within the herd. So obviously they have a, um, a ranking system so we've got people we've got the goats that are right at the top so you've got hank and harry so hank is boss let me take you closer hey harry how are you oh there's abby Hello. um so hank is boss so hank gets to eat everything first um and he thinks he's boss so um he tries to eat everything second um because harry is hank's twin he gets sort of automatic second place although he does kind of get a bit bullied by andy um, oh, Abby's just doing some brushing while we've got a chance. Um, and then because Russ is their older brother, he's kind of third in line. Morning, Hannah. I don't know, I feel there's quite a lot of dispute between these two. Morning, Abby's mum. Hello. Um, yeah, so Russ is actually a lot better today. He's so beautiful as well. Morning, Cara. Hello, Harrison. How are you? Um, oh, Russ, don't be scared. Um, so grass is growing a bit more... Um, green down the bottom there um, obviously it's a bit colder today though isn't it so it's not very nice boys what are you up to are you being naughty are you being naughty boys uh, no not yet <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting bullied <laughs> um, you can though please feel free um, so obviously lots of animals have adapted to different methods of morning um, Shelby exploring morning Tilly uh, for goats obviously they don't have things like hands or individual fingers they're actually they have two toes so they're called a two-toed ungulate ungulate is a hoofed animal and as you can see they've got two toes and um, so they can't really pick their, ha uh, their hooves up to manipulate stuff so you'll see with lots of new stuff they're using their horns and their mouths and their tongue to basically um, investigate whatever the new stuff is and they've done that with this log and they've oh. completely ripped all oh of yeah the for those off. of you that watched our video on um, enrichment we gave the goats this log and we had it absolutely covered in sweet potato um, and uh, swede and things like that and they've completely eaten all the bark um, hello so stuff in their enclosure uh, we put like a, um, a bristle hard bristle brush so they can set Andy. Free. And we've also Come here, put baby. In, uh, salt lick, so we're hoping that they're oh. going to oh. have a little. Oh, lick oh. Like You're so She's mean. Been on one the last few days. You're so her. mean. Fat belly. Yeah. Honestly. Morning, Paul. Morning, Helen. Thanks, Jess. They are super cute. Um, Andy is our original goat. He is super cute, but he's just really naughty. Like poor Craig. So mean to Craig, and I've got a real massive bruise on my leg. He just um has this habit of going right between your legs when you least inspect it and because his horns are such a perfect shape he can literally like almost try to lift you up can't he from your crotch which is less than desirable 
if I'm honest. Um, yeah. Oh, there's Hank over there. What are you doing? Um, right. Should we go inside? Yeah, so we'll see what they, how they react to their new, new items and their So let's see how, what you think about your new salt lick. So goats need additional copper in their diet. So we obviously give them morning Craig. Oh, he's hiding upon the door. Craig's hurt his back today. Poor Craig. By sneezing. By sneezing. <laughs> I wasn't going to admit that it was such a silly reason. Um, obviously, lots of hay because goats need to have constant hay because they're ruminants. So they've actually got how many? Four, Four stomachs. Um, so they constantly chew. Hello, Hank. So we've got lots of hay. And then we've actually bought um, these salt licks. Um, it's taken us a right age to get them because... Um, Oh, just getting deliveries to the college has been really difficult. Um, morning, Caroline. Morning, Mark. Morning, Jem. And Olivia, hopefully. Um, yeah, so... Oh. Too in no. Really well, they're just interested in the hay. Aren't they? Andy loves his hay. Boys are outside. Hank's not sure on people, so he tends to take, like, keep a step back. Um, yeah, hi Amelia and Mia. Morning from South Yorkshire. Wow, what's the weather like down there? It's freezing today. I'm chilly. We're all wearing our hoodies. Craig needs a green hoodie. I have got it on. Oh, don't be so moody. Dominant, dominant male. I was just telling him to. Hey, it's my food. Morning, Lou. Usually, if an animal is dominant, they have access to the best resources. So, the best mates, best ah, areas. Here we go. Best um, food resources. And he's enjoying his new brush. As you can see, they do definitely like it because the one next to it is. Yeah, so the one next old. to it did look like that once upon a time. But they just love, like, it's a good itching, scratching post. Yeah, and their horns are just made from keratin, so they do get um, flaky. So sometimes they, they use that to clean their horns down a little bit as well. Oh, I thought Andy was going to back up and brush his bum on it. Um, they also, interestingly, use their um, horns to thermoregulate. So thermoregulation. Hi, so Owen. How your body. Uh, temperature morning mr marsh the surrounding environment um, as they're mammals they're warm-blooded remember we were talking about that last week um so they have actually got like um a blood system inside and um when they're they're hot you'll feel their horns and they're extremely warm and that's so that they can have heat escape their body morning holly from glasgow oh my gosh it must be really cold where you are um i feel bad for moaning about how cold i am morning vicky ah uh. so they have a little good session this afternoon to trim their hooves so goats hooves need to be trimmed quite regularly so it's every six to eight weeks to check their hooves uh, just a case of like going down the animal's leg like we did and picking it up with their knee and then against their soft pad so they have a soft pad that's very similar to our pad on our hand morning daisy and hank's more acceptable of it than, than the rest of them a little brush and everything this afternoon come on then andy come give me a headbutt Hello. Oh, a horn to the eye. Thank you. That's what I wanted this morning. Backing up. Hey. Yeah. Have that head rub. Sam. Morning, Emily. Oh, Andy, why? <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. So I just got hooked in my hoodie. You are such a meanie. Look at you. It's always showing off. I think it's because you're here, Craig, isn't it? Oh, I've just well, caught you yawning. I worked the weekend. The action was really not very nice to me this weekend. Oh. I've got like, loads of bruises on one of my legs. So you can see um, the two boys outside. So they're the lowest in our herd, unfortunately, because they're, they're actually our favourite. Not that we have favourites. Um, but so the they're, out, they're the newest. Yeah, so they're outside and they have sort of last opportunity to have breakfast, unfortunately, because everybody else um, bullies them. Um. See, Andy is capable of being nice. Not to me. Just not to Craig. P station. Yeah, just not to Craig, unfortunately. But he doesn't like any handling, so he loves fuss, but as soon as you do any handling, like, like by going for his, um, like, legs or something. Or brush him, it'll lay down. It's really hard for the students, sorry to the students, I had to use him for the synoptic, but um, it is really hard to use him and this is because when where we rescued him from he was just literally left out in the field and had no human interaction so it took a long time to actually build this bond with him it's yeah really have bonds with your animals so that you can monitor their behavior so you can understand like their health status um understand you know that they are adapting to their environment that they're happy with their environment because there are sometimes things you can put in an animal's environment which may not 
abide by their welfare or their needs. So <laughs> Andy is mean, you're right, but he is sweet as well though, look at him. See? I mean obviously with with goats they don't have hands to sort of interact with you, so using their horns is their way of interaction. So, you know, that unfortunately headbutts is part of playing for goats. Obviously for us it's less than desirable. But yeah, so um Abby just mentioned our synoptic assignment. So for students of ours that are watching, good morning and um, thank you for joining us. Really happy you're still engaging. Um they have to do something called a synoptic assessment, which is quite a big assessment. Uh, they have to actually do quite a lot of practical assessments and they have to verbally give us a verbal commentary on what they're doing um, and part of their assessment was actually to, to observe goat behaviour so they had to do what we're doing now really well apart from stroking because that obviously changes <laughs> their behaviour it's really hard especially with the goats because they, they all they want to do is be around you yeah but um, students are trying to observe Andy, their natural behaviour um, but lots of it was standing at fence and staring at the observer because they just love us so much. Yeah. Right, shall we go inside because it's pretty chilly? Um, right, we'll see you guys in a little bit. We're going to come and chop your feet. Oh, Andy's trying to escape. Andy, you are not escaping. You can, why don't you try your salt lick? Look, that cost me lots of money. Oh, you can hear, oh, so you can hear next door. Um, we've got the stable being built, so it's a bit a bit noisy. A bit noisy. Oh, it's very. Oh, I can I can briefly show you. Steve probably doesn't want to be in the video. Morning, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So Steve's um currently adding an additional sleeping area for the goats. So basically, the two little ones have um, even more space to get away from the bigger goats because it's really really important that as a herd. Um, even when you keep any sort of group of animals, it's really important that they have enough space to get away from each other because we don't, you know, there's always going to be competition for food and for sleeping space. Um, oh, it's actually quite sunny here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just really important. Thank you. So we're going to go to the mammal room first. Um, we don't have any birds. Um, for those of you that joined us last week, we don't have Polly today, unfortunately. Um, like oh, you saying so about places for uh, animals to hide, that's why it's really important for guinea pigs to provide... Oh, my God, look at Tulip. <laughs> so she's she, eating she, so much hay that she's having a hay coma she does um, sleep like that as well which I have to really go over and prod them because it does really scare me um, that, they're, that unfortunately something bad's happened but no they just sleep like complete weirdos um, so you can see these are our female guinea pigs hello morning Jade morning Louise Ah, oh, I'm glad it makes you smile Hannah it makes us smile too oh um, so here's two of our boys. This is um, Rocket and Niffler. Um, and then we've got Grey. Uh, no, it's Groot. Groot. Oh, I always get their names so wrong. All the males are magical good. names. So Groot, and then there's Ron in there somewhere. Yeah, Ron's hiding in there. Grape is the white one, isn't he? Oh, I always get confused head with back, names. Oh, head out with that yeah. little house at the back. <laughs> Um, we'll just see what some of the other animals are doing this morning. Morning, girlies. Oh, and Guinness. So we've got Foxy, Fudge and Guinness there. Morning, Katie. Um, not behaving overly exciting today. I mean, you can see Aggie. Been, um, so this week, we've noticed that, it, you know, it's the time of the year where rabbits um, are usually, like, mating. Um, Morning, Ollie. Springtime is quite common for a lot of animals for that. And um, so... Um, Aggie has actually been nest building so we've been coming in and seeing that she's actually been um, uh, putting lots of straw in her mouth and then running off into one of the Many huts boxes. at the back and then making a little nest so that's the sort of behaviour you would see naturally when the animal is about to give birth um, as we've said before about dewlap so if you look at uh, Foxy the black uh, larger female she has a lovely dewlap at the front, so they also use the hair from their dewlap to create their nest. That also helps with smells. So the um, right, rabbits, when they're first born, they're blind, they have their eyes closed, and so they're using a um, higher sense of smell to help understand their, hey, their grief and their mother. Ah, oh, you're sitting very funny. You're sitting very funny. Aren't you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, Aggie. See, she is cute, even though she looks really yeah, aggro all the cute. time. Uh, <coughs> hey. Um, morning, Charlie, from Lower Stoft. Lovely. Right, let's see what the daggies are up to. Are you so, going in? Uh, yeah, we're going in. Um, firstly, we're just going to give them one food bowl. We usually give animals in a group of two or more at least 
two bowls, and that helps with like diffusing any tension over the feeding. Oh. But I'm just going to show you what they're like in their hierarchy. So um, the hierarchy of, of Davies is called a complex hierarchy. So they'll have one top dog individual that have a group of high ranked individuals, and then there'll be lots of small groups that will be lower and lower in the ranking. And as I said before, that means they have reduced access to getting in without them escaping is always a bit of a um, mission, isn't it? Have you got the lock? We'll come this side. One bar in, oh, and maybe we won't. We'll Dolly, this white one is currently on my shoe. She's the dominant female. She will fight for what's in here. So this is just the normal daily nuggets. But I've also added some of their favourite treats. This is um, it's like egg foods. It's high in protein. Usually, commonly used in uh, canaries. Yeah. yeah. So canaries. This Dolly goes to notice it. She might be more interested. Oh, I don't in know if my phone's going to be. Try and jump out. My phone just wants to focus on the lovely, exciting um, bars. Morning, Karina. How are you? Well done for getting your nursing assignment in. Woo, you're completely done now. Oh, look, look, look. So here we go. So this individual is trying to guard the food. It's on the top. Ah, oh, so you can see and Dolly. She's naughty. Look. So look, she's actually like, this is uh, called agonism. So agonism is any behaviour that's to do with fighting. And this is what they'll do. So you'll see that um, other Davies is probably second in command. We'll put the other food bowl in to stop this now. You can hear, I don't know if you can hear the noise they're making as well. But you can see that that Daegu was trying to mount Dolly. So that is a behaviour to try and um, assert, um, put its dominance onto um, Dolly. So this is why we have usually two or more bowls. We usually put D cups in as well and yeah. try and um, stop them from just eating on the ground because they do actually climb trees and stuff. But these two are top dog and subordinate. So this is the alpha and beta. But you can you can see they don't actually physically hurt each other. It's um, For show, superficial, basically. yeah. yeah. Um, and animals adapt loads of different defence strategies for behaviour. And defensive strategies can be used for, um, like, warn off predators. But it also can be used for things like this to try and help in, like, dominancy hierarchies. That other day, it does not care. Yeah. <laughs> Positive behaviours, though, to hey. help. So this little chap here is a very low-ranked individual. So what she will do is spend a lot of time grooming the other individuals to try and make friends. And that will help her because they'll put out food, literally perfect, like, dug out food for her. If, so if there was a whole group of them and there was a low-ranked individual it can sift out food it can also provide food as presence and provide protection in fights so if there was a big fight maybe this second in command one would help this one because of all the grooming uh, morning daniel oh karina we miss you too it's very very different with our students here and um, whilst it's nice to obviously get time to spend with the, with the animals we really miss spending time with the students as well it's the teaching yeah we're okay though we're all good i'll just switch around so you can see because oh craig was skiving <laughs> on his phone, on his phone. Center, I know, against, okay, the against the rules. Um, yeah, we're all really good, thank you for asking though, but we, yeah, we're fine, we're just plodding along. We're just getting it, getting things done. Um, it's quite nice for us because obviously it means we can get quite a lot of our admin sort of bits done, but um, we do really miss having students here. We can't wait to have students back again. Um, so you can see these two just having a little old. snuggle. <laughs> Doing yeah. what old animals do. Yeah, there is. Rest. A, um, obviously, we've got um, Flopsy. No idea why she's called Flopsy. Does not have floppy ears at all. Um, she's obviously just doing her own thing by herself, really. Um, Dolly is the white daegu, Shelby. So you can see the white one Lovely on the... white daegu. She's super on the bowl. nice. One of our students has used her for animal training. <laughs> so she's actually really tame for, like, handling yeah. and stuff. She's such a lovely what daegu. Are what are you doing? So Dolly, Dotty, Deirdre, Debbie. <laughs> I can't remember what else. What? So, yeah, in, in there, most of the dagos are the sort of natural brown sort of colour, but then we also have... A um, A gooty, yeah. Um, then we've got uh, Bernard and Blossom. So you can see from the behaviour that's been going on, Blossom's poor back at the moment. Yeah, Blossom's got a naked back, um, and I promise you it's nothing we're doing. And um, Basically, it is that time of the year where Bernard is becoming very... Um, frisky good word good word um and he loves blossom who wouldn't look at her um and he's being a bit overly amorous with her which is um when, when rabbits do mate hello you hello you when rabbits mate they hold onto the back of the the fur on the back of the neck um and unfortunately for blossom it's happening quite regularly isn't she's, it she's giving it back though hey you cutie pie oh you're so cute bernard oh can't even stand it, you little cutie pie. Hi. Blossom just don't really care, do you? Are you all right, Bernie? Oh, he's such a good baby. 
where should we go next? Oh, no, we haven't been around the other side yet. We were just actually mentioned to you, so obviously we don't get to see too much of the chinchillas. I don't know if you, there is one up there currently snoozing. Um, we did a night study last Wednesday. It was a fantastic night session, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, we actually slept in the animal centre. How much sleep did you get, Craig? More than Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Abby had a hole in her hair bit, in her airbed. Me and Laura didn't, luckily, but um, they all fell asleep before me, so I was by myself for for a fair bit. Yeah, so just seeing in the corner. Gerbils having a little snooze. So gerbils are um, animals that will just continue to be active throughout the day. So they'll be awake really early in the morning, get their food, then go have a little rest, then do some other activities. They're climbers, they're burrowers. So this is why we've got this box. Yes, yeah, so really got... important to help exhibit natural behaviour. Um, it's a mixture of sand, uh, bark and compost and it allows them to, to burrow. We put food in there sometimes to help with the promoting that foraging, natural foraging behaviour yeah. as well. Um, this up here is a jerd and if you don't know what a jerd looks like, do have a look at our um, nocturnal study because we've got a great photo of him active. Um, he'll be sleeping, won't he? He'll be snoozing. Hello? Nah. Hello? Mm, I, I think, think so. he's like proper burrowed in. But yeah, if you want to see what a jerd looks like, um, or a jaboa, but yeah, we did a, we did a little video on our night session. Um, we videoed the jaboas, and then we also had two big cameras, broadcasting cameras. Thank you to Mark from Media for bringing those in for us. Um, and they were focused on the jaboas and the African pygmy dormice. So we just need to look at the footage for that, and um, then we'll upload the footage. Um, we see them hunting, though, which was really cool. We put in loads of crickets, and we saw hey. the spiny mice hunting. So these are the um, Egyptian spiny mice. So these guys have a spiky back, uh, kind of like a hedgehog, not quite as defined as a hedgehog. Oh, he's just literally right there. Oh, he's gonna, gonna hide now. Oh. There he is, he's under there. Can we see? Oh, I don't know if I can get my phone in. Oh no, it's not happening. You're under here. Do, do, do. Oh, there's a jerd. Hello. So they just look like giant gerbils, really. Mm. But as their behaviour is adapted to, um, so their sleep cycle is noct uh, nocturnal, so because they're awake at night, they've adapted these Hello larger you. eyes. So behaviour has to adapt along with physical adaptations and also external uh, factors as well, influencing factors. Mm -hmm. For anyone who likes owls, you can tell uh, when an owl is acting by the colour of its eyes. Oh, that's cool. So um, take a bar now, they have black eyes. So they'll be nocturnal. Um, if the animal has like a black piece of red around the eye... I was going to say, what about a scops owl? Because they've got like a, kind of like an yeah, orangey yeah. red. So if, if it's orangey red, it will be um, like sort of crepuscular. Yeah. Uh, and if it's yellow, like a burrowing owl, um, with black people, then they are um, diurnal. So I was just saying, we don't, we don't have Polly today, sadly. No, we don't. No. She's too heavy. She's, yeah. Um, so obviously the mice are all super active at the moment. Hello, you. This is a um, yeah. This is a fancy mouse. Um, these are uh, boys. Hello, you. Oh, they're so cute, aren't they? Beautiful. So they're um, just your normal fancy mice. Then we've got some fancy mice. These are females, so they're um, you can see they're slightly a bit more round, I suppose. But they were like naturally for their behaviour have like um, lots and <laughs> lots of babies. Um, that survive. ginger rodent I showed you, that's a, um, a satin mouse. So if I could see, if, oh, I don't know where, so he was in there, wasn't he? I, oh, he's there, look. Hello. So he's a satin mouse. So just another type of mice, really. They're just named on the colour. Oh, we used um, to have a naked mouse until last week. Yeah. And then um, we've got some more fancy mice here. They're these old. are our old girlies. So we've had these for, like, years. I don't, Rescued. they're still going. Still going, aren't you, mates? Hey! So yeah, two and a half, which is great age for mice. Um, I don't know if you can see on the, the white and um, um, brown one's face, you can see she's starting to lose some of the fur on her nose. It's just because she's quite old now. Um, but yeah, so they're all doing really well. The animals, I don't know what they're going to be like when we finally get students back, because it's going to be quite a shock to them to go from, you know, just having two or three people here at a time. Um, it's a trimouse. Here's a gerbil. Oh, he's lovely, that one. All right, mate? Well, 
It's lovely to humans, but not lovely to gerbils. Mm. So this is this is something really important. So you'll notice like um, there's natural behaviour of animals, but when they're in captivity, it may slightly change, and you have to adapt, adapt to that animal's characteristics. Now we've tried to put this gerbil with other gerbils because they he are. He did originally come with our other gerbils, which we showed you earlier, but and they are um, group <laughs> animals naturally, so they will live in a hierarchy. But every single gerbil we put this gerbil with, it has attacked. Yeah, so, he's not gerbil friendly. Not gerbil oh, yeah. friendly. So you have to adapt your practice to suit your animal's characteristics, but also their natural behaviour. Uh, I certainly know that working with monkeys, there's been a lot of unusual monkeys that I've worked with that have had very specific needs to meet their personalities and characteristics. Yeah, and we were saying about this earlier, weren't we, that it's really important that you know your animal's personality because it's, it's also important to know species-specific behaviour, but knowing um, your actual animal's personality is really important as well because that can obviously differ slightly, can't it, as well, so Even it's really how important. how they use their environment. Like, they're, we had a group of monkeys that would specifically like one area of the enclosure. We always have to make sure that that area of the enclosure was available because otherwise they would have very today? high stress no no harvest no mice, harvest today, mice awake today um, no. no door mice awake it is not they are nocturnal though aren't they oh look rocket's trying to rocket's trying to chew his way through to the other side what are you up to it's grouped i am grouped what are you doing you're a funny boy aren't you what do they eat? What do, um, the guinea pigs. So the guinea pigs, well, we get all of our food from a company called Supreme. Shout out to Supreme. Um, we get a really good deal with them. All of our animals have um, what we call um, a complete food. So they don't have, um, they don't have like a, a muesli-based food. It's all sort of pellets. That stops them from selective feeding. It just means that we can guarantee they're getting all of the nutrients that they need um, and they don't pick out the best bits and leave just the bad bits um, oh, that they don't want anyway. Um, okay, we're in the nocturnal room now. Here we go. I made some new breakfast yesterday, so I'm just testing to see if they like it or not. So Abby's in with the sugar glide. It's very hot in here today. <laughs> when I came in the morning, it was absolutely freezing. Gosh. I might just have to check the temperature on that radiator. They've all, been, they've all had their breakfast and stuff now. So they've all gone back to bed. Sister. But you can see from their enclosure that like, in terms of behaviour, they're an arboreal animal. Again, they live in groups. Um, they've got an exercise wheel. That's really oh, they love that, they? they have high energy. Um, and as you can see, they need to have a large space. So, yes, they are common to have as pets, but you need to make sure that if you're doing that, that you're able to provide them with all their actual species-specific needs. We're hoping to get a species to go down the bottom, aren't we? What are we going to get? Yeah, so we're looking at getting some, um, some tenrex. They look fairly similar to hedgehogs. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're really interesting. Um, when the males reach um, sexual maturity, they pass from their eyes. Gross. Is, uh, that is not why we're buying them, though. No, no, <laughs> yeah. So um, we did have an African pygmy hedgehog, but unfortunately we lost him a few months back. So we're going to try Tenrix as a as a, a difference. What are they in the? So we'll have a quick look at the Gambian pouch rats. Um, oh, my camera really struggles to focus. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Oh, I don't know if you can see because it's not very bright. Um, so these are our giant rats. Hey boys, so we've got two boys. Very cute. Oh no, not everybody's cup of tea, rats. They're absolutely gorgeous. They though. are gorgeous. I saw a funny video of someone who had one as a pet that had got inside their washing machine and was using it like a hamster wheel. Oh, lots of English <laughs> terriers get inside um, tumble dryers and things as well. But yeah, so people do have Gambian pouch rats as pets and have them just loose in the house like they would a cat because they are they really big. Be, and they can be little trained, they're super intelligent, so. We should get some horses. I don't like horses, Sam. <laughs> and neither does Craig. And neither does Abby. We, um, yeah, no. And we and sadly, you'd have to ride them. yeah, we don't actually have um, space for horses either. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, we don't. We don't have horses. We maybe one day we'll be able to work with a, a maybe like a stable, and offer it. Um, maybe distance learning or as a satellite centre. This oh, is chickpea. Let's see if I can turn you around. Good morning, Chickpea. So Chickpea's a Syrian hamster. She's getting old now. I've noticed that her behaviour has changed. Oh, you can see Coco up there as well. She's um, sleeping a lot more. You know, she's easier to handle. Like normally she'd be like running about like. Yeah. Also her, her fur, so usually mammals, their fur will start to deteriorate in condition as they're getting older. 
Um, what do so, we feed the rats? Um, the rats eat a real varied diet because they're omnivorous. Yeah. They get um, they get rat biscuits, but they also get ferret biscuits. They also get mixed seed. They also get chicken, nuts, fruit, yeah. nuts, seeds, yeah. Yeah. insects, eggs. Yesterday I blended up egg with uh, cooked butternut squash, which they actually ate most of. Um, they actually ate a slightly higher protein diet than normal rats. So that's why we have to add the additional ferret biscuit. So they get a bit of everything. Um, why don't we like horses? Because they are scary. They are they really scare, scary. Yeah. Um, don't mind everything. They are scary. I like donkeys, but just not horses. I don't know. I can, I can tell you. I've been out of Shetland pony, pony for an interview once and it scared me. Yeah, I did once work at um, a farm park and I saw a, a, a Suffolk Punch horse stand on somebody's back, obviously by mistake, but it was it was probably terrifying. Um, and now they just I just find them really scary. Um, right, so we're in the exotics room. Um, Shel Shelley's um, on the move, so that's a... That is actually a mineral block you're supposed to be eating, not walking on. Clarice is exhibiting some Funny. basketball behaviour right now in her new enclosure. Yeah, so we'll see. Oh, hey Clarice. I don't know, um, it's a bit um, condensation-y, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll just see. So Clarice is right at the top here, which is great because she's making the most of the UV light which is coming through up there. Um, she's shedding at the moment, which is why her face is that funny white at the moment. Um, but she's lovely, lovely bright green. She's also shedding on her tail a little bit. Um, hey, Clarice, how are you? All right. You're a funny girl, aren't you? Hey, you a funny girl? Yeah. So when we talk about um, exotic animal behaviour, like reptiles, like Clarice, it can be really difficult to... Um, to watch them or to see if they're behaving diff differently unless you really know your species. So for example, bearded dragons, um, they have great behavior traits. So they do lots of hand waving, um, they do head bobbing. Morning, David, how are you? Um, so these guys, they're both female, but if they were, to, if we were to get Boo out and bring Boo over, he'd do lots of head bobbing at the girls, um, waving. Um, but generally with reptiles, if they're showing signs of abnormal behaviour, you're looking for changes in colour. Now, obviously with chameleons, they do tend to change colour more readily, um, not obviously from like green to pink or anything. Um, but these guys will go maybe a bit darker under the chin, so where their beard is, um, they might go a bit paler. Um, also for reptiles, they do something called prolonged soaking, which is where they get in their food bowl, um, sorry, water bowl, and spend more time in there than usual. Um, that would indicate that there's something wrong with them. Um, oh, this is one of our little froglets. You can see some more at the back there. Little cuties see a leopard gecko tail coming out of there um i don't know can't see the new um ghost is out and about morning ghost how are you i know jane it doesn't make any sense i love i like anything weird and scaly um just not horses strange couldn't tell you can tell you um so this is ghost he's our rat snake i think he's absolutely beautiful look at those big blue eyes um they're, they're, he is albino so he does have red sort of pinky red eyes but if you look really closely they've got this really beautiful blue sort of hue to them yeah we'll pop up and see colin i think colin's coming out actually so colin's enclosure we're colin loose at the moment because he's on abby um See if Colin will have some water. Maybe you're not keen today, Colin. Do you fancy any water today, mate? You're thinking about it. Not sure. But his behaviour is very different to other reptiles. Because he's been a pet, he's been out so much, he's very, um, he's very, like, oh, friendly and love, like, Attention. Yeah. Super affectionate. Not all chameleons like being handled, so yeah. Colin is quite um, extraordinary, yeah, to be honest with you. My head on my bum and just hold on. Um, Craig's um, just shown me we've got a baby giant African land snail. Which means there could be a lot more. Which means there could be <laughs> potentially more in, in the enclosure, so Craig's just having a look. You can see some of them are at the back there. That is a teeny tiny one. Teeny tiny one. Let's see who else is awake. Um, none of the leopard gecko. Oh, hang on. Our, our Amazon milk frog parents are up. Look. Oh, there's one here. 
Hello. Oh. So they were making loads of noise at night. Yeah, when we slept here, these guys kept us awake, actually. So, um, and we had tadpoles the next day, so I know exactly what they were up to. I um, don't know what is wrong with our animals at the moment. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so these are our adults. Um, very, very cute. Very, very vocal. And um, we've also got our crested geckos, but I don't think they're very... Oh, there's one. You can see a tail just sort of in there. Um, but they're nocturnal, really, so they don't generally come out very much during the day. Active, yeah, we did see them being active. That was lovely, actually, wasn't it? Uh, we've got and all, Boo. And the animals asleep, and it was so cute. Colin holding... Oh, watching Colin, Colin asleep. So cute, yeah. He was, asleep. he was literally holding onto his branch all right. the day alive, snoozing. It was yeah, if you want to see, we did, I, did put, so I did put a picture up of Colin asleep, so you can have a little look at that. Um, here's Boo. Look at that fat belly, Boo. Honestly, does that, that, how is that even comfortable? He's very lazy. He is very lazy. He's got his own hammock. Haven't you, mate? So, yeah, because he's a male bearded dragon, his behaviour is going to be slightly different to the girls over there. So he does a lot of um, arm waving. So he just literally lifts his arm up and waves. Um, he also does lots of head bobbing. Try and get other people's attention. Don't you, mate? Hello. That does, you just look like you're broken. That's a weird position to be laying in. Just doesn't look right, does it? What a weirdo. Yeah. We're trying to get their enclosures just slightly um, height, you know, with more of the height so that they can actually make the most of their um, UV. Uh, so this is our Mexican red knee. Morning, Emma. We can talk about the um, Colin jerky, like, like bodily um, and bodily. And there's, I don't know if you can see, but hiding back there is our um, zebra leg. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And then, you know our scorpion situation. You can see um, we've, got, we've got our Dwayne, the rock scorpion there. Morning, Dwayne. How the devil are you? And then in there, we've got a forest scorpion somewhere, but they're quite small, so it's quite difficult. Look, Colin's like, please, just have me back out. So at the weekend, um, I uh, brought someone along with me, and um, they absolutely love Colin. Hello, Leo, for watching. Um, and Colin was doing the, this, like, jerked body movements, um, sort of back and forth. Now, that's used as, like, um, a way to say, look, look at how big I am, look at my bright and colourful body and everything, look how strong I am, like, don't come and have a fight with me. So it's like um, a sort of a warning to say, please stop, please don't do it, like, come and fight me. Um, there, there's species of Ogama which look very similar to bearded dragons. Be bearded dragons are Pagona viticeps, but um, there are some similar looking species. Um, but bearded dragons come in a variety of different colours as well, so you get some bearded dragons that are a lot more sort of red factor or yellow. Um, Boo is quite, he's got really lovely sort of orange eyes, but then he's quite grey. Well. He's, <laughs> he's shedding actually, so uh, you can see his tail there, he's shedding. But there's, there's four different subspecies of bearded dragons. Four different subspecies. Um, and head bobbing, it could be anything. It could be that they're trying to attract a mate. It could be aggression. Um, it really does depend on the situation. The girls are doing the proper, like, like flapping. Beard, yeah. The other oh. morning, for some reason. There's a leopard gecko for you. Hello. Well, Hello. Oh, don't worry, Denise. Um, 11 a.m. might be quite early, I guess, if you're still in bed. <laughs> um, Some people will be back at work today. Yeah, I guess there might be a lot of people back at work today. Um, we hope everybody is still staying safe and still abided by the government guidelines and keeping apart from each other. I don't think she's realised that I've, I have given her a hide, but... Oh, it's, it's hidden. Not, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit more natural. Yeah, we do that. Not, so. uh, she's Maybe funny, isn't she? Yeah. She's but he, funny. He's changed his behaviour with his new enclosure as well. Done lots more basking. So this is our boa constrictor. Um, very, very cute. He doesn't have a name. Yeah, no, has, he doesn't have a name. If you'd like to name our boa constrictor, um, do comment below. We generally go for a, a bee name because he's a boa constrictor. Um, oh, you've been up since 5.30. Oh, sorry, Denise, I wasn't insinuating you're still in bed. <laughs> I think it's Harriet, yeah, I think so. Um, ooh, can't. Um, and we've got... Shelley's just running around, aren't you, like crazy? Generally, I like to... If you, um, if you wait a minute, mate, you can come out, can't you? So, I like to pop Shelley on the floor. Come here, mate. Ugh. Here we go. Oh, 
So um, just let Shelley have a run around the um, room. Oh, Barry, Barry the boa. That's quite cool. I quite like that. Barry the boa. Um, just watch for Shelley. Oh, this is our hog nose. So she's got loads of interesting behaviour. So You can see um, her eyes are cloudy. That's because she's going to shed soon. She'll, like, puff up her body, and that's, like, a threat. sort of, like, threat warning. Oh, Bowie the away. boa. Quite like that. They also pretend to be dead, which is called stenosis, and that's for an anti-predatory defence. Fake strike. Oh, yeah. indeed. So um, these guys are really... <laughs> yeah, fake strike, there we go. <laughs> these guys are notorious for being a bit um, difficult when it comes to handling, but it's generally all threats. Um, Matt, we can't call him Bernard because we've got a rabbit called Bernard. Um, but yeah, so our... Um, I'm just trying not to stand on the tortoise at the same time. So yeah, he does... Oh, uh, this... She does um, false strike. Hello. Um, flattens herself out completely as well to look really aggressive. Um, puffs out to look aggressive. Boris Johnson. <laughs> I don't know if I want to name a boa after Boris Johnson. <laughs> Um, but yeah, because she's flattening it or flattening herself out completely, so she looks big and scary. They also do, like Abby said, make a real puff noise as well when they come out. Um, so yeah, really, really different um, type of snake. There's Shelley. What's she up to? Um, and then we've got obviously our. Um, so she's just going to have a look. Look how tiny. She, I mean, I do have size seven feet, but she is pretty small. <laughs> you have giant hands, yeah. But she is pretty small, aren't you, mate? Hey, eh? But pretty fast for a tortoise. Look at her go. She loves being out. She likes um, going for people's feet. Um, she's never bitten anybody she, here. Oh, but... She did actually at the weekend try oh, to go for me. Oh, did she? Try tried to bite you? Yeah, she sort of, like, had a, she sort of went like... Oh. I told Sean that she's never bitten anybody. And now... she, she didn't bite you. She just tried. Oh, we don't have any lights on. They were turned off last oh, week. Oh, yeah. So we've got our little angelfish. Hello. Oh, quite big angelfish now. So this is the um, most dominant male. You can see that he's got the real bright uh, dorsal fin. Um, and then, oh! Sorry. <laughs> we've got the two other um, angelfish. I'm really distracted because Abby's about to turn the lights on and I am... Um... Any, any lights? Lights? Yay! Here we go. So you can see our um, black phantom tetra and things like that. Your tortoise t chases after your cat. I think um, she would probably chase after things if, if there was something else. Cause she does chase after your feet. I um, don't know where the frogs are this morning. Probably hiding. Probably hiding. Yeah, that'd be great. So um, we spoke to you before about the um, African clawed um frogs the way that they eat um they when you put food in they kind of um shovel it in with their hands abby's gonna get some abby's gonna get some ready got blood worms put them in hello hey. no so abby's just gonna defrost those quickly i'll just show you our fridge um me and abby got but a bit silly with um, cartoons. So we've got loads of um, informative cartoons across the animal centre. So all about the difference between being venomous and being poisonous, because that's really important. Um, and there's also information on a, a turtle versus a tortoise. Um, got names. And um, we also have our own animal husbandry tasks to help the students on how to follow the six steps while they're undertaking their practical skills with us. Just so they don't always have to rely on asking us constantly. We like to give them as much information so they can use their own initiative. Um, really, really important skill, especially when they go out into the world of work. Um, right, so Abby's got some blood worm. Um, they're worms that are red. It's not actual blood. Yeah. You can see on my right, let's... Uh, We'll come down here. I don't know where they are, though. Just give some up here. So okay. Got a bit. Oh, please don't drip that on me. Right. William Snake Spear. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Right. Yeah, Laura suggested that for the thingy if she was... Um... Oh, did she? Right, let's see if we can find them. Oh, there they are. Whoa. Did they come out? One of them did come out, I think. He's at the... Right, so blood worms, uh, blood worms in. Oh, look at that. 
So look, the poor. Oh. I did give them some. <laughs> Maybe they're not hungry. I bet you, as soon as they see it, they'll be like, so, um, we don't feed them every day because they've got quite a high, um, like, nutritious diet. So, like, to mimic the wild, they get fed every other day. And see, they've got their, um, like, shovel hands, which help scoop the food in. It's deposit, deposit sediment feeding. And they'll just kick it up. Come on, oh, there we go. I'm I want to There we go. It's like doing the movement, but he's not opening his mouth. But yeah, they can live to like 20 to 30 years. All oh, this is perfectly doing now. Over here. Yeah. Move that rock, maybe. That's all right. I wouldn't keep um, disturbing them. I think they'll he'll do it once he's decided. Oh, here we go. Look, you see him doing it? Shoving. There we go. That's perfect. Nom, 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 nom. Just absolutely love them. It's like a cartoon. They're so weird looking, aren't they? But so interesting. So we don't, these guys are in here just by themselves. We don't put any, no, the bloodworms aren't alive. They're frozen. You can buy live um, bloodworm though. Um, so these guys literally just live by themselves. There are no fish in here with them because they will shovel fish into those mouths. And you can see the size of his mouth. If you've got small fish, especially ones that live on the bottom, um, they'll be easy for you to, for them to just disappear, unfortunately. So yeah, here we go. Look at them go. Look at those fingers. Hey. Look at those chunky legs. Right. I think that's it for today, guys. Um, who was that? Aiden <laughs> oh, Aiden. Oh, so we'll just um, I'll t see if I can get all three, all three of us in. Um, so thank you very much for joining us again this week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for joining us again this week so we do actually have a new member of staff starting with us very soon so shout out to Layla we can't Ooh, wait to college. start working with you so Layla's coming to us from another college um, she's got loads of experience and the students are going to absolutely love her we can't wait to work together um, so yeah there'll be four of us again soon um, please stay safe everybody we'll join you again next week we haven't decided on our topic for next week yet um, so we'll, if anyone you've got, got any ideas yeah, yeah, give us a if shout if you've got any suggestions do let us know if not we'll see you next week stay safe bye everyone bye. Bye.